to Cedric Irvin. And Rashard Perry detonates the play. The guy that has played, he's hard to move, and he's played some pretty good football for this Syracuse defensive line. Big third down right here for Stanford. Can't afford to make a mistake trying to pick up this first down. Daniels heaves it downfield and out of bounds. And Diggs is letting him know about it. Trying to get in the quarterback's head a little bit. Andre, you talk about McCord's toughness. You heard Fran Brown talk about it. You get a play like that. You can tell that's translated to the fans oh, who've no come doubt. out on when Friday he, when night. When he went airborne, absolutely. That festered all throughout the entire team. Defensively, trying to match his toughness. Big punt for Flintoft. Pena signals for a fair catch and makes it inside his own 35-yard line. Syracuse with the ball, down three. Kyle McCord back out there. Take the lead, 14.03 to go in regulation. Pena motions. McCord down the sideline, intercepted. Jay Green with the pick. And Stanford takes over in plus territory. I mean, he had a receiver or two open in the flat and just ignored Quint Allen McCord. Roush the tight end reattaches. Daniels to Io Manor. Out of the embrace of Lewis. And picks up about eight on first down. He's tough in his own right. He took a big time shot from Elijah Colton Clark. Was slow to get up and was right back in the next time Stanford had the football. And he's been through with injuries. Missed his entire freshman year with a torn ACL. Got hurt his senior year of high school. Year before that, high school season washed out due to COVID. What I like about him is that he can move around anywhere and play the position. Ford. Strong run and a first down for Stanford. They're in field goal range now, but it would not shock me if this turns into four down territory. This was time out. Is down. Point injury. Troy Taylor earlier in this half going for it on fourth down for minus territory. Told us he's going to play to win this game. Stanford with a three point lead. As hard Ford to, hobbles off. Hard to imagine he was playing for quarterback. The way he runs the ball, the way he sets blocks, the toughness in which he runs with. Man. Enter Chris Davis Jr., who is more the speed back for Stanford. He's given this defense problems. Seven carries, 79 yards for the freshman Davis. Syracuse showing blitz. Davis the call. Ran into Diggs. Yeah, right. Stood up, no game. He went right back to the same exact play that uh, Ford ran the previous play. Try it with Davis and uh, fooling Syracuse there. Turnover in their own right. This orange defense. Ford right back in there. Marcus Brown, a true freshman, walk on into the game as a wide receiver. Tiger Bachmeyer hauls it in, thrown out of bounds by Jaden Bellamy. It's third down for Stanford, and again, field goal keeps it a one-score game. Third down and short with a power running game. I can see them going for it here on fourth. And it may be four down territory the way Troy Taylor has kind of rolled the dice, so to speak, earlier in the third quarter, going for it, backed up inside his 30-yard line. And they bring in the two running backs, Irvin with Ford, Brought some quarterback power out of this formation. Daniels this time comes under center. Rolls to his right. 
He'll throw and find Cedric Irvin, the sophomore from Miami, whose dad had 3,000 yard seasons as a running back for Nick Saban at Michigan State. Boy, the imagination of Troy Taylor. Man, you, you're thinking they're going to go power and run the football with a condensed set, two backs, and they've got enough confidence in Irvin as a route runner to get himself open against zone coverage and just kind of turn and give his numbers to Ashton Daniels. Right, he's got the bloodlines. Michael Irvin is a cousin. The red zone, Ford, bulldozing across the 15, a gain of five on the play. What is he? He run tough between the tackles. True freshman. As mentioned earlier, he made the transition this year from quarterback to running back, and is the shares the time or the stage with Urban. But tonight he's been. It's been the main attraction. Stanford recruits nationally. Ford out of Tom's River, New Jersey. Screen pass. CC impacted and dropped by Bellamy. Don't forget Bellamy was a starter a year ago. He brought in Barnes Jr. who won the position along with Clarence Lewis on the other side. And Bellamy was kind of getting playing time here and there. And with the injury to Barnes, he had to step up and has played some outstanding football tonight. Third and eight. Could a run play be on the table here? Very much could be uh, when you look at what it leaves you with. And he's not afraid to go for it on fourth down. Eight attempts coming into tonight's game on fourth down. Daniels will throw. Picked by Lewis. He wanted I.O. Manor and Clarence Lewis with a diving attempt on the ball. Any better pass, it would have been six points for I order. So Kenny now to make it a six-point game. He's hit from 38 and 51. Six for six as a place kicker. Make it seven for seven. Three for three tonight. And Stanford leads by six. Um, there's a different level of authenticity with him, right? There, there's no filter. He is who he is. He's going to speak his mind. And he's betting on himself based on his background. I mean, he's a young man who grew up in Camden, New Jersey, one of the roughest neighborhoods in America. He fought through adversity. He bet on himself every step of the way. Became the number one recruiter in the country. When he was with Kirby Smart and won a national title. He's an elite defensive back coach. This guy is real. Authentic as we look at tonight's progressive game flow. Play on an out and up when he had his running back, Allen wide open in the flats safety in the box the handoff is to Willis and he's knocked backwards a loss of two and with no run game to speak of tonight if you're Stanford can you just pin back your ears at this point not really because when Willis has been in the game there have been sparks of a running game there have been you know bits and pieces of one so you can't really do it yet but when you get them in long yardage situations behind the down and distance marker like this you absolutely can pin your ears back. Second down, 12 to go. Empty set. Four-man rush. McCord, tough throw, brought in by Pena, and brought down by Tristan Sinclair. Good ankle tackle in space by the sixth-year senior and the defensive leader for Stanford. They can ill afford to lose Jandre Reed, the most experienced guy up front. He's limping around the center, back over the ball and lined up over him Anthony Franklin who's had a big game for Stanford plenty of time on the play clock the blitz McCord incomplete wanted Hatcher covered well by Wright. And Syracuse will be forced to punt. And 
Stanford's going to get the ball back with a chance to make it a two-score game. Hey, he's busy wrestling with Colin Wright rather than trying to locate the football. You got to, you know, every receiver in the country, young receivers, you got to think every single time that you line up to run a play and it's a pass play, you you're getting the football. And that's how you should approach every play in the passing game. Stonehouse to punt to Bachmeyer. Fair catch. Made at the 20. Less than eight minutes to go in regulation. Big drive for Stanford as the Cardinal tries to tack on. Water to his parents' home villages in Nigeria and funded through his own NIL. He found contractors with citizenship in Nigeria, the U.S., and Canada as Justin Barron tackles Davis right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second and ten. Syracuse defensively needs a stop. Clemson with a field goal makes it a two-score game and really puts Syracuse in a position where they're driving uphill. Yeah, Fran Brown needs this defense to really step up. Elijah Robinson, their defensive coordinator, going to dial up something here to get to Ashton Daniels. Daniels has thrown two picks. He's run for 43, thrown for 124. Throws on the run and behind CC. And now this crowd will amp it up on third and ten. We're just not used to seeing him having accuracy problems. This is 62% coming into the game. The last game out against Cal Poly. 23 passes. He was 82 percent in that game. The two touchdowns didn't turn the ball over, but he has missed this badly on a couple of throws here late. They just get the snap off. Time for Daniels. In the pocket, directing traffic. Heaves it off the hands of Iowa Manor. Chestnut caught it out of bounds. It's fourth down and 10, and that's a huge three and out for Elijah Robinson. Yeah, it is, and two incompletions in a pretty good field position. Pena waiting at his own 40. Flintoff just got it off. It bounces, Pena fields the grounder. And Syracuse will start at its own 39-yard line. ESPN Plus with some great featured games tomorrow. Virginia, Coastal Carolina at 2. Arkansas State heading to Iowa City. And at 8, Arch Manning makes his first hit. And they can't get down the field the now way Grandpa, Arch does. Grandpa could. You think that fast? I'm not sure he was that fast, did but he, he, he ever go 67? <laughs> There's the blitz. Record finds Gill. Room to run into Stanford territory, a gain of 18. Going through the proper reads and distributing the football, the last interception, trying to force one to Meeks. McCord north of 300 yards passing. And Syracuse only 13 rushing yards. Matchup with Pena in the slot. Looking that way. Does Pena hang on? He does, draped by Jay Green. Second down after a gain of a couple. Yeah, safety against Pena. I'm going there every time. His setup guys, it's a nice throw. Low and outside, only Pena's gonna come up with it. Ronde Gadsden, awfully quiet tonight. Only two catches, 12 yards, four targets. Pena. 10 catches, and he's hit the century mark. Already outnumbered to the bottom of the screen. Looking toward Pena. Instead, it's for Gadsden, and Sinclair gets in there for the PBU. I don't know what's going on with Gadsden tonight. He just doesn't see, he just doesn't seem to gather himself. And he normally excels at contested catches. Troy Taylor said earlier this week, even if he's covered, he's open. Pena covered by Green in the slot, bottom of your screen. 
McCord on the slant off the chest of Meeks. Here comes a holding penalty against Syracuse. Oh, what Troy Taylor does Hold here. Him. Offense number 72. Well, now what does Jeff Nixon do? Needs to get to the Stanford. A lot of time, Anish. A lot of time. McCord on the move. Throws downfield. Complete. First down, Daryl Gill. They elect to go zone. Drop deep in the... Hey, understood. to this Syracuse offense. I think he's a little bit of that quarterback diving over the top, rubbed off on him. Two tight ends into the game, Valari and Maximilian Mang. On the slant, touchdown, Jackson Meeks. And Syracuse can take the lead with the PAT. a slant and you get the line back to transfer Meeks. The extra point good and Syracuse has its first lead of the night with three th needs a field goal to take the lead. They've got all three timeouts. 313 to go as you said a little while ago Andre. A lot of time. A lot of time. Yeah, they, they've allowed Stanford's allowed this crowd back into this baby. Daniels to Roush, one-handed catch. Doesn't get very far, no gain on the play. Second down. And just back to the line of scrimmage. And it's the pass rush of this Syracuse defense that's harassing Daniels now. Jacquez digs as a spy. Roush over the middle takes a big hit from Cinco Clark. It'll bring up third down. I mentioned both teams have the three timeouts. Yeah. This year, you also have the two-minute timeout. Stop it a fourth time if you need it. From Stanford. Four down territory, no doubt, for Troy Taylor. Ford, first down. Ankle tackled by McDonald and still churning all the way to the 43 yard line. Big run there by the freshman Michael Ford. And let's see if Stanford takes this down to the two minute timeout or if they call another play. They're going to try to get one off here, and I would if I'm Troy Taylor. They do. Daniels throw complete. Iowa Manor to midfield. And that brings us to the two minutes of the two. Stanford in its first ACC game, looking for its first conference win in its new league. Down one, less than two minutes to go. Or give a court as much time to put a drive together as you can. Here comes Ford. And he drives forward. A first down for Stanford at the Syracuse 46. Both teams have all their timeouts. And Stanford just needs a field goal to take the lead. Sure, yeah. I would go ahead and huddle and use all of the play clock. And I know what Fran, Fran's trying to do is he's trying to, he wants to call them after first down, after he gets starts calling them after first down once uh, the play is running over. There's Ford. Finds a seam. Flag down, two in the backfield. Gonna be a hold here. Holding. Offense for the 55. Two yard penalty. Pale, the right guard, is the guilty culprit, and that is huge. Now this offensive line, much maligned the first couple of weeks for the most part. I think I'd have to take that first time out. I and mean, he wants to sink them up with the downs, but you don't have that luxury. Now the clock running after this.
they spotted the ball in the back pocket of Fran Brown on that incomplete pass. And he had Iowa Manor open, wide open down the field. And it was going to, if he catches it, it's going to be close to a first down. Timeout after each one of those stops. The Orange have the lead. Stanford down by one. There's the blitz. Daniels hit, completes. Io Manor makes his way back near the original line of scrimmage, plus a yard. You got to call the timeout here. And Stanford probably needs to call a timeout. And now they do with 40 seconds to go. Joshua Cardi, who was a sixth round draft pick of the Rams. Emmett Kenny, the senior from Fargo, please is in his first season as the place kicker. Prior to this year, he had never attempted a field goal in college. He's seven for seven this season, three for three tonight. Hit one from deep. 51, 51 yards, yeah. Probably need close to another first down to give him a reasonable chance. Third and nine. Middle blitz. Daniels incomplete. It's fourth down. No flag on the play. Ishmael CC the target. Chestnut in coverage. Big down here for Syracuse. Even bigger for Stanford. Had to call the timeout. Talk about this, baby. So fourth and the ball game. If Stanford is to have any chance, they need a first down. Down to one timeout. Boy, that holding penalty. Killer. How big is that right now? Huge. Well, Andre, you have Alec Io Manor, who can make the contested catch. Daniels is elusive with his feet. What are you trying to do here on fourth down? Well, I'm not allowing Daniels to stand. You, you're talking about what Syracuse will do? What Stanford Stanford? Will do. You're just trying to get Iowa Manor. That, that's your playmaker. There's, that's a guy that, regardless of coverage or not, can make plays for you. So I'm trying to formation him. I might move him in, in terms of motion. To, to get him open or get a matchup that you like. But if I'm Syracuse, they blitzed up the middle the last two times. I'm bringing the heat up the middle again on Daniels. Io Manor lined up at the bottom of your screen. Timeout, Fran Brown. Right, timeout. Syracuse, the first of the half. It will be 30 seconds. Now both coaches know the importance of this play. If Stanford gets the first down, they're going to give their kicker a chance. Want to take if Syracuse a gets the stop, it's over. Well, they want to identify where 13 is. You know, now take a timeout, reset the defense because of it. I'm going to get my best cover man on that side, and I'll get some hands on him. Don't, only give, don't give him a free release. Make it tougher for him with a, maybe a safety over the top, helping out in coverage. But there is no way I'm giving... Iowa Manor a free release on this play, knowing that that's what Daniels wants, as well as head coach, offensive coordinator Troy Taylor. First meeting between these two, Stanford's, and they move it. They First game anticipated in the ACC. Syracuse looking to go to two and zero in conference. I'm going there right now, and he's looking to my right, and I'm going right up here with this matchup. Ford goes wide. Daniels in the pocket. Wants Io Manor. Back shoulder. Made the catch. Alec Io Manor down the sideline. How do you leave Clarence Lewis one on one? By it fast. Daniels dives to the 15. Now Syracuse has got to start burning, yep. burning timeouts. Clock running. Down to five, down to four. It'll come down to a field goal. What, what a play. What a big throw by Daniels. At this point,
this point in the game. And then you talked about the kicker for Stanford, Stanford Kenny, being perfect on the year. He hadn't had this kind of pressure, though. This is to win it. But you're indoors. There's no wind. And Daniel's got the ball between the hash marks. Three for three tonight. Still something when you know it's on the line. Butterflies maybe churning in the stomach of the young the senior senior kicker from Fargo. The senior from Fargo lines it up. Buckle up. I think Fran's gonna spend a time out here try to ice him. Syracuse, their second of the half. It will be 30 seconds. What a throw and catch from Daniels to Io Manor. You called it. Everybody knew. Well, I, I couldn't believe they were in that coverage. I mean, that's pre snap. We talked pre snap read all of you earlier in the game. That tells me I'm, I'm looking the safety right and I'm going right over to 13. I cannot believe that you, you lined up this way. A 34-yarder for the win. And for Stanford's first ACC win. The senior from Fargo. number 58 five yard penalty it's still second down this is the true Stanford. freshman Khalil House yeah if you're a Stanford fan you're hoping House didn't just ice your kicker <laughs> oh my goodness just a flinch right there in the middle the pit in the stomach gets a little bigger yes it does now a 39 yarder for the win Kenny, right down the middle, don't you know? Stanford wins its first game in the ACC. 26 to 24, the final. Mira, no slow. No Yeah. 